Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've been well. I'm here with Mike Glove here at his his headquarters in Provo, Utah. Mm. And uh, this video is just gonna be a tour of the headquarters with our tour guide, Pro. What's up, Pro? So, when were you established? No. 2015. <laughs> just kidding. Anyway, here we are, new facility as of how long ago? <laughs> a while, a few months. It's been a handful while. of months. Yeah, it's been a while. I, I think the last time you you uh, saw the facility in Heber, right? Heber. Yep, that was yeah. the last one. So I don't know. Maybe give us a little. I think most of my channel knows you, but if not, do a little thirty second spiel. Yeah. So um, my name is Mike Glover. I'm the uh, owner of a company called Philcraft Survival. And since the uh, origin of our company in 2014, 2015, we've been about teaching civilians how to be better prepared um, and best prepared for the worst case scenario. Like everything from mobility, first aid, uh, de personal defense and family preparedness. And um, we've been doing it for now over a decade. Nice. Yeah, so Mike Glover's probably one of my f favorite humans, honestly. I'm the, don't tell him. Don't tell him I said that. I but hate you. does a lot of a lot of things that I'm into, a lot of things that you guys are into as well, and has a whole facility where it's kind of one stop shop. That we'll get into it. They have a bunch of training areas in the back, and then a storefront here. So if you're in Provo, Salt Lake, or you know drivable distance, they do a lot of seminars and a lot of formal trainings here, and worth worth stopping by to check out the space. But We'll get into a little preview of it here. This is the storefront. Um, you know, the concept was, if we're bringing people in here to train and they're getting the education, then naturally they're gonna ask like, hey, what's the recommended kit? What's the recommended things that you're, you're saying? And Philcraft does make products, uh, mostly first aid, but everything from uh, loadout bags for your vehicle to EDC belts. Um, but we wanted to provide more, so we built a little storefront that has everything from you know, ham radios to your personal defense uh, uh, weapon system of choice to ammunition to clothing and apparel. So we, we don't do a lot, but the things that we do do, I think we do it well. Um, and yeah, it's it's a small storefront and, you know, like we have uh, Philcraft Jiu Jitsu, which you'll see the dojo in the back. So we have our no-gi stuff here, um, everything from sweatshirts, um, all of the fanny packs and hats. Um, we even have Wolf 21, which is, you know, like Ruck Up, for example, is um, mushroom energy gummies for my company, um, Wolf 21. Uh, sleep Aid, because we, you know, obviously being prepared means getting good sleep and health and wellness. So it's a whole bunch of things. And we take pride in this being kind of a boutique specialty shop. And we don't want it to be like a whole bunch of yard sale stuff we want it to be very preparedness oriented and with that being said if you're a small business and you have something in the field of preparedness i know we had talked offline about peaked fuel mm -hmm. um we sell uh peak uh fuel which is in my opinion um my it's peak refuel peak refuel yeah yeah which is my in my opinion my favorite uh camping food um, but if you're a small business and interested in doing business with us um, you don't have to be local to utah you just have to be in the category of preparedness uh, email us at info at com, and we could talk to you because we, we, that's what we want to do. Yeah, Peak is the, Peak does happen to be local to you guys, yeah. though, huh? Yeah, they are in Utah. And then you got recently launched this guy I saw over here on display. Fieldcraft, they do design a lot of their own specific kits, some vehicle-oriented panels, and then that one looks pretty cool. Mike actually gave me one of these, but I haven't even opened it yet. Yeah, he just gave it to me like an hour ago for yeah, for this, reference. So this is our this is our backcountry carrier. Our our backcountry carrier is um, the concept is we want you to be able to have your life saving gear in the backcountry. We don't just want you to have it in your vehicle. You know, if you're in if you're in the backcountry and you get into a situation where you need life saving gear, and it's in your vehicle displaced from where you're at, that's a problem. And so we didn't want to just take military equipment and translate it or transition it into civilian equipment because a lot of it, a lot of the times it's not applicable. Like I don't want you running around on a dirt bike with M4 Max, 
I mean, there's a time and place for that, but mm -hmm. but just doing Maybe a backcountry soon. trip. Maybe soon is the time. Maybe place. soon. Who knows? Maybe soon. But yeah, lots of gear all around, vehicle centric, and some on body stuff. Go lay down. You carry Come some KC. Go lay down. Some radios, more food. But yeah, cool little kind of boutique shop, and yeah, you get a gun here as well. Yeah, BCM. Um, we have the pistols. It, Dave mods all of his specific. Uh, modded pistols which is pretty cool um we have you know your favorite multi-tools like we have the swiss army one the og uh, og one yeah uh, we have a couple knives and all the pistols that we've tested and recommend i hope to get staccato in here as well they make a, a good a carry pistol called the c2 hopefully we can get that in here in here we have defensive shotguns recommended by kevin estella uh, we have mossberg and we're hoping to get beretta in as well as I think the only AR we carry is BCM. Correct. Yeah. So, yeah, we got talent like Jason, former Marine. Hey, Jason. Does jujitsu. We have Garrett, who we hired from Sportsman's Warehouse, who's real good with guns. And yeah, that's low key. Nothing, nothing nice. crazy. Yeah, but yeah. you're in the area and looking to to stock up. Swing in. Oh, in my book. Where's my book? Here it is. It's big. Oh, no, yeah, okay. here. Here we go. Is that the only copies we have? You got some behind. Oh, do we? This is a book. If you're a new or seasoned preparedness guy or gal, this is a good book written by this guy right here. He also reads the audiobook version, so if you like his voice, check that out. Kevin also. He's a survival director, Fieldcraft survival director. Fieldcraft survival director, so if you've heard of this book, Kevin is also currently under the Fieldcraft umbrella too. Another good survival book. Sweet, and then you have some offices in here, yeah. and then a bunch of training. Most of this building is training, actually. Yeah, my, my, the concept was I wanted to get everybody under the same roof. A lot of businesses do decentralized um, operations, and I wanted marketing and media and the company all under one roof. Mm -hmm. The exception is if you order from Philcraft Survival, all of our stuff is coming from our warehouse up in Heber City, and Provo is dislocated from that. But they, they yeah. meet with us every single week. They kind of have a shipping, mm -hmm. shipping and a little production there. Yeah, shipping a little bit of production, it's uh, fulfillment, is all done out of a different building because we need the space to be able to ship stuff. We do media st uh, meetings and kind of synergize over what we're gonna do next. I like the desks. Custom They're desk cool. built. Um, and then if you guys saw the Mike Force podcast with Mike and I, this is where we shot the Mike Force podcast. So this is, yeah, all those, all those videos you see of Mike next to this backdrop, that's the backdrop. Yeah, we just, we just filmed a couple podcasts in here. Yeah. It's pretty good. That we did some content for the app, the Fieldcraft Survival app, and we did what's called the Mike Force podcast, which is on YouTube as well. So yeah, Fieldcraft Survival app. So you got the Fieldcraft Survival podcast and then you got Mike Force podcast as well. Yeah, I don't do, I don't host the Fieldcraft Survival podcast. Yeah. Kevin Estella and the team do, cause it's, we try to diversify it against a whole bunch of things, including primitive survival, family preparedness, first aid, and just me as a speaking box for those things. I'm not the expert of those things, so I'd rather have the expert do it. Yeah. But Mike Force is my personal one. Yeah, so Fieldcraft now has a bunch of kind of specialized experts in various fields. And so you'll hear a lot of the expert experts, even more expert than Mike in there, given proficiency doing those things. And yeah. then kind of classroom area. Yeah, so um, behind this door, we have a cold plunge and we're gonna put a hot sauna in here. Um, it's nothing fancy, it's probably a mess but we use it for events. I, I'm on a protocol for the stem cell, so I can't do it till March 1st. Okay. But I'll be doing it soon. And then- So that's what you went to Mexico for? Yeah. And then here we have a classroom that seats up to 60. Um, we do responsible citizen every Wednesday for free to the public. And that's everything from stop the bleed to emergency management procedures to communications. And then we hold a major conference here once a month we just had the ham radio communications conference. We have the AI cyber conference oh. coming up and then we'll have the first aid conference after that. Cool. And then where's the best place to find when those kind of things are? Are they uh, on the training schedule or are they yeah, separate? So if you go into fieldcraftsurvival.com, 
underneath the tab that's responsible citizen, that, that will be all there. Okay. Every Friday we do Friday afternoon club, which is just a club where it's a more intimate experience. It's $25 as a workshop and has more practical hands-on stuff. And then um, uh, most every weekend in this building, as well as throughout the country, we have training of some, some kind. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so they do a lot of, uh, they do some training here, which we'll get into, and then they, they travel as well. So they may come to a somewhere near you. So the music you hear in the background, that's the gym. They're doing a workout right now. Performance and recovery group, um, a former Army Ranger and, and his wife run that gym, and it's an integral part to here because health and wellness, we feel, is really important for preparedness. Cool. Um, yeah, we'll show the gym. It's right over Right over here. There's yeah. people actively working out. You can see it through the store, doing the wad. I don't know if they want to be on camera or not, but yeah, they can be. There you go. Um, come on, bro. Oh, this this game right here is it's a game, but it's a it's a it's a it's a 270 degree scenario system that allows you to use simunitions and laser. Yeah. to put yourself in an immersed, stressful scenario. Is it uh, Virtua or whatever? It's all Something? virtual, yeah. yeah. And, and the coolest thing is, the coolest thing is you create your own scenario. So I could do a scenario of um, meeting gone wrong in this building or uh, an aggressor or whatever. Oh, so then you can load that in? And they could load it in and then you could load the points and then basically create the entire thing where it's a video game that you create scenarios. Okay. Yeah. Nice. I did that down with Travis Haley. Yeah. Same machine. Same yeah. game. So then it's basically like you can load different programs in there, essentially like active shooter or you know, guy at the gas station or whatever, and it responds. Actually, it's kind of kind of like a video game, honestly. Yeah. Where depending on what you do, like who you choose to shoot, if you miss them, if you hit them, how long it takes, different scenarios will continue to kind of unfold for you. So it's a little bit of thinking, but like as real life as it can get, kind of. Yeah, the, the coolest thing is you can immerse yourself in a stressful scenario in controlled environments and then extract all the analytics of the things you did right and things you did wrong. Yeah. Which I think is cool. Yeah, and then there's, there's like, uh, you basically program in, is the right response to shoot this guy with a hostage or not? Could you miss him? Could you kill a hostage? Yeah, so all those things kind of unfold for you. It's really cool. It's yeah. a really cool system. Very expensive. <laughs> yeah, expensive video game. Um, in here, we created a, a basically a, a, a home defense um, simunitions experience where yeah. we could run people through home defense scenarios of advancing potentially to a threat, uh, advancing to go find and recover someone they love, um, or defending against a, a threat. So are you doing like one man room clearing kind of stuff here? We do one man, two man. Some... We do um, active shooter scenarios and we do personal defense scenarios that include um, combatives scenarios. So like okay. what happens when you're in close proximity, somebody grabs you, slams you against the wall oh. and you're in your own house and you have to fight for your life. Um, we also do scenarios based on real life self-defense situations every single class in personal defense, which yeah. we teach all over the country, but we teach here a couple times okay. um, every quarter. That sounds really valuable. I've done a little bit of, you know, I'm not previous service or anything, but done a little bit of force on force training and like team room clearing, uh, which isn't very applicable to me because I'm not really gonna be clearing rooms with the team, right? So I've actually personally thought I should take some like one man room clearing yeah. scenarios. You should, it'd be fun. Yeah. I mean, it's fun and what we get is we get a lot of spouses that come here and train together. Yeah. Um, and you can't see it, you can see in this room, there's every room has a camera and that is for after action review, but also in the classroom we were just in the TV screens, you could live screen it so the students could watch the student going in the run and then we could do an after action review where people have yeah. seen it in real time. And these are high quality cameras that zoom in and can see all the things that happen in the room. And, and we, we built this to have different problem sets. Like this is a uh, opposing threat where you have two adjoining doors and, and a hallway. 
where like I have a threat here and I have a threat here. If, if you have a team of guys, it's yeah. easy. But if it's just you, how do you address it? Well, there's tactics for that and we run people through those tactics. Scenarios like this, you built it basically to every house is different. So your house might not even have this or your house may be full of these and you can kind of train on them. Like this one's got three doors, three entry points into one room. So yeah, a lot of cool problems to solve. Yeah, and we wanted to, in some of the rooms you see furniture, like people always do CQB or close quarters clearing in rooms that don't have furniture. And so they hug the walls. But we know because you have a home that like you have furniture and you put furniture against walls. So the same walls that you put furniture in, how are you tackling that problem? Well, it's in best practice to actually do it that way. Yeah. And so we have rooms with um, furniture and then we have rooms without so we can isolate this and, and people can kind of crawl, walk, run through it. Yeah, raw skill sets and then this is more real real life applications over yeah. here. We even have nooks and crannies, like this could be a closet, this could be a bathroom, mm -hmm. but this is a perfect hidey hole for bad guys. Once you're past like basic rifle, pistol skills, this, I would say this kind of stuff is probably the most applicable for just a regular civilian person. Yeah. Home invasion kind of encounter. Yeah, what we find is people have very technical expertise in proficiency, but they've never exercised that proficiency in a high stress environment. Yeah. And that's when you see your skill sets degrade because you're weighing the scenario under stress over technical proficiency. Yeah. And, and then you kind of truly see what you're made of. And the more exposure you have to that, the more comfortable you become operating or being technically proficient under stress. That's where someone like Mike, you know, has decades of experience, like clearing rooms. Like team guys are trained on that. It's like probably one of the main things you train on. Someone like me, where I could draw and shoot a gun very quickly and very accurately, when I first started training on this kind of stuff, I was just fumbling. Like, I was an idiot. Yeah. I didn't know any, like, anything about it. So, really eye-opening when you do this kind of stuff. So, it's yeah. cool you got this. Yeah, the, uh, one of the coolest things we have is the ability to do basically a flat range and build proficiency utilizing both simunitions and unit solutions carbine which all shoot plastic projectiles or eight millimeter BBs. And this allows us to build good habits and repetition, but also bridge a gap for people who are uncomfortable with firearms. Like yeah. a lot of people um, kind of blow off the fact that, you know, a lot of people don't know what they're doing. And when they buy a gun from a gun store, they get the recommendation from the person at the counter, a person that might be in their friend group, and they go get it and they bring it home and they're like, I don't know where to begin. Yeah. We have basic fundamentals, uh, the fundamentals of marksmanship, basic firearm safety. We can all do it in a controlled environment in a simulated experience that acts like the real thing, it, as close to the real thing as you can get. And then, you know, coming through here, we have some of our mobility stuff because we use this for scenarios. Like what happens if somebody's trying to drag you out of your car? And if, if somebody goes to reach in, some people pull a pistol and shoot. It's like, did you feel like your life was in danger? Um, is that legal in the state that you come from? Do you think this is your domicile? And we ask the questions because it's not as black and white as you would think. It's why we advocate for like USCCA, not only having a concealed carry understanding of laws, but maybe even having the lawyer on QRF, on quick reaction force, to be able to come to your rescue because after you break that shot, your life is gonna change dramatically. Yeah. Um, and even if it's in a good way, because you get through it and it's justified, that could take up to a year, even two years, to get through the legal process. So we wanna exercise all those protocols. And we actually have a scenario, or most of our scenarios, where we have a police officer that's paid by us intervene, pull you off the scenario, and then start asking you questions. Mm. And then some people who are so high str strung or high stressed, they start saying things that you're like, that's not even what happened. Yeah. Like, so you shot eight times. No, no, I shot three times. You shot eight times. And here's the camera to prove it. It's like, oh, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Like, you shouldn't probably say that in the middle of an interrogation or interview. Yeah. Maybe we should go over how this needs to work. So it's, it's all good training, and that's why we isolate some of these things. Moral of that story, say nothing. 
Yeah, don't Say talk nothing. too much in that, yeah. in that scenario. Keep your mouth shut. So in here we have our jujitsu studio. Um, like tomorrow we have 150 people coming for Tim Kennedy's seminar. Greg Lappin, our professor with the abs. Um, we, we, we routinely teach families, we teach women, we teach uh, kids because our program, Greg Lappin's program for jujitsu is to build a base of health and wellness, but also discipline, um, how to operate under stress. But it's not just for men, it's for families. And so we take pride in having a family program. If you're, even if you're driving through, come be a part of our program and bring your family. Don't just come by yourself and you know, leave your kids at home, leave your wife at home. Come train with the entire family. And that's, that's something we do uh, every single day here at Fieldcraft. And the thing I love about Mike and Fieldcraft is they're, you're basically trying to hit every aspect of preparedness. So you're not just appealing to that fat guy with a bunch of food in his basement, right? You're like physical fitness is a core element, self-defense is a core element, gear is a core element. So he's trying to check kind of all the boxes under one shelf or under one roof. Because you're even like over in the classroom area, you're, you're doing courses on like homesteading and stuff even, right? Yeah, we do family preparedness, homes. We, we even have a homeschool seminar where we teach parents how to teach better to their kids and go over different curriculum. So it's, it's full spectrum preparedness, I think. Yeah, so I'm a, a Colorado guy, but I, I wish I was a Utah guy just to come take advantage of this facility. Yeah. So this is very rare, rare opportunity if you're in the, in the Utah area, especially if you're a local. Utilize all these resources here. I would. If I was here, I would. But, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we hope to actually bring it to Denver. Oh, yeah? We're working with a range called Centennial out, out near Centennial, Colorado, okay. east of Denver. Yeah, Centennial Gun Club? Or? Centennial Gun Club. Yeah. And we already have sold out classes in that, including personal defense, which is what you see here. We have sold out pistol, carbine, first aid. Um, and so get on the schedule. Look at philcrasserava.com, find Colorado. We do more training in Colorado than any other place besides Utah in the really? country. Cool. Um, third to Arizona, fourth to, to California. Okay. Yeah, so mainly regionally based. And Rick Lofton, who works for us, teaches in North Carolina on the East Coast, but a lot of our training happens in this, this area. Okay, and obviously this was a tour of the <laughs> headquarters, but do you have some, you have the Fieldcraft Survival app, and do you have other like online program, training courses, seminars, things like that? Yeah, so all of our education and the things that we teach from an academic perspective are on Fieldcraft Survival, wherever apps are found. And the cool thing about the app is we're gonna start integrating training components. So if you want a buddy to go to the range with, but you don't have a buddy who's available, you could bring the app, you could uh, download the video if you don't have reception, and walk through a process with me and go, hey, today we're gonna go over grip, this is what you need, here's the four rules of firearm safety, this is your loadout, um, let's get started, and then we'll walk you through the entire process. That's everything from like um, a specific drill and pistol and carbine to making a primitive fire rubbing sticks together with Kevin Estella. So it's more practical, capable, than just an education platform for talking heads. Okay, so if you don't have any friends, Mike will be your virtual friend. <laughs> yeah, the AI. You don't need AI. <laughs> yeah, or AI, as we've, as I've found out on this trip, can be your friend. <laughs> um, chat GPT is what we're talking about. So I don't know. Anything else you want to showcase in the facility? So let me just show you this real quick, just the opening to this, because this is a, a plan for the future. We have 19,000 square foot in this facility. So even if it looks small, it's really big. And what, That's what she said. Yeah, uh, <laughs> exactly. Um, I'm half Korean from the waist down. So if you look at this fence and all that space, that's not our space. We, there, somebody's subleasing that. But we plan to take over that space in a year and, and potentially build out an indoor range facility using action targets, indoor range kits. Okay. And we'll do a six to 12 bay on that side. It'd be really fun. It's somewhere where we could do privates, we could do uh, field craft classes, and then do a whole bunch of, of cool stuff and making this training experience kind of full spectrum.
the simunitions. I feel comfortable. Now I can go to the range and do it live. Cool. All right. Well, thanks for the tour, man. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, it's been a good time. Uh, where can people find everything you? Uh, PhilCraftSurvival.com, and then my big thing is uh, on YouTube, Mike Glover Actual. I do a show called Prepared. If you guys want to see me, um, I do the un uncensored version on Patreon and the censored version on Mike Glover Actual. That Prepared show is all about distilling current events and then telling you, hey, this is the issue, and potentially giving you some education and some recommendations for how to be best prepared. So go on Patreon if you want to see Mike do it in the nude, uncensored. It is. And then on YouTube with clothes on. I'm never wearing pants in those videos. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> All right, man. Well, Mike, one of the coolest guys I know. Uh, again, I've said it multiple times in this video, but if you're in the area, swing by. Can't guarantee that Mike himself will be here, but you can check out the facility. A lot of great classes. Uh, utilize that. Education is power. Knowledge, knowledge is power? I don't know. Knowledge is power. That's knowledge is power. power. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, until next time, take care.